In this video I will show you how to make optical lenses. My starting point for this was to make a lot of ray tracing diagrams by hand. In fact many many drawings to get an idea how all of this works. And um, you basically don't have to do this but uh, as this whole process is quite a lot of effort you really should know where you want to go. So, for the purposes of this video, I will make a thick biconvex lens. Let's get started. In general, there are spherical and aspherical lenses. Spherical lenses are easier to make, and that's why I choose to go with them over aspherical lenses, which may produce a slightly better image quality. For the next step, you need a 3D program. In there, you place your two spheres as you have found them hopefully in your drawing. Um, if you don't have a drawing, then I guess uh, go with your intuition. And the overlapping area here already shows the cross-section of the later lens. You then combine these two shapes to get a new shape that only contains the overlapping section. And uh, now basically you already have the 3D model of your lens. I then also added this little handle which will come in quite useful in later steps of the process. With this 3D model you go to a 3D printer and uh, once it's printed you get back something that should look like this. The surface of this thing is quite rough so it needs quite a lot of sanding to get it as fine as possible and as smooth as possible as any imperfection will show up later in the finished lens. The next step is to build the box for the casting mold. And I made this uh, roughly 1.5 cm larger in every direction compared to the lens itself. And the material for this doesn't really matter as long as it can be cut quite easily and at least one side is pretty smooth. After the glue has hardened, I go over every edge with the silicone sealant for bathrooms to make it watertight to prevent unpleasant surprises in case anything would leak out later on. Despite the smooth surface of the box, it would later be quite tricky to get the mold out of the box. So that's why you need to apply this uh, separation wax, I'm not quite sure that's the proper English name. After brushing it on you need to let it sit for a couple of minutes and then do it again three or four times. Finally I add these small notches on the box which will make it easier to put in the shape into the mold and to keep it in place. For the actual mold you will need this silicone rubbery stuff. Again I'm not quite sure what the English name for this is. The stuff I use is called Curaform K31 and also the B component Curaform B128. Also quite handy will be a scale, a calculator, some paper towels, a cup and a stirring stick. Mixing this is pretty straightforward. Basically you take a guess on how much you need. And in my case I had to mix the two components, 100 parts to two. And after you've mixed them, you basically take your stirring stick and mix it until it's one homogeneous substance.
When you pour it in slowly, you might see some air bubbles still trapped in the substance. And I discovered that simply blowing on it will reduce these bubbles quite a bit. I drilled a small hole into the handle I added to the shape before and put a nail through. Then I put the whole thing into the notches I put into the box before and secured it with some tape. After waiting some time until the stuff is hardened, you have basically finished the lower half of the mold. And for the upper half, you basically repeat the whole process, meaning first to brush in the separation wax three or four times, and then making a new cup of the rubber and pouring it in slowly, just like before. After the second half is hardened, next step is of course to get it out of the box and to get also the 3D printed shape out of the mold. I take a sharp knife and make the little hole the handle left in the mold a little bit wider and bring it into a cone shape, which will make it easier to pour in the epoxy later. Normally hardened epoxy should separate quite well from this rubber, but to make sure I also brush in a couple of layers of this separation wax. Mixing the epoxy is quite similar to the silicone rubber. It comes in two components, the resin and the hardener. And there's many different ver versions of epoxy. Some get hard in a couple of minutes. That sounds nasty. Others take days. What I use is, co is called epoxy water clear. And this takes two days to harden. And I mix this in a ratio of 100 to 37. Mixing the epoxy is a crucial part. After adding the two components, it should look like this uh, milky fluid. And uh, after mixing it a couple of minutes, it should, uh, as the name indicates, become water clear. The two halves of the mold should fit together perfectly and uh, should also be watertight. But to make sure, I wrapped uh, the whole thing also with some layers of tape. You should pour in the epoxy very slowly and when you're done you should uh, jiggle the whole thing a bit to get out uh, air bubbles that may be trapped in there. After a couple of minutes I notice that the whole thing bulges a bit on the sides and that's why I put it between these books which apply a bit uh, pressure on the sides. After the epoxy hardened and I got everything out of the mold, I cut off the handle and um, we're done. Nah, not really, the surface looks still rubbish so we have to do something there. As always, when sending something, you start off with very rough sandpaper and uh, go to finer and finer grits. I started off with my power file, which is quite rough, and finished off with three or four steps of finer and finer sandpaper. The results should look better and better each time, and the surface less and less milky. However, my experience is that uh, even with the finest grids of sandpaper, you will not get a perfectly clear surface. So you shouldn't invest too much time into this. 
but still this is a very important step and you should not skip this as every imperfection in this step will later show up. All in all for every lens I is however still invested over two hours in sanding time. Despite excessive sanding I couldn't get rid of all the scratches. Some of the deeper ones were I think caused by the mold. So when you notice after a certain time that the quality of the surface doesn't improve anymore you should uh, stop sanding and the next step would normally be polishing but uh, I will do something different and uh, drill this little hole first. I actually tried polishing a lens until it gets to a really good optical quality but this takes a really long time and uh, so I tried something different which is submerging the whole lens into a low viscosity transparent varnish and um, this fills in all the little holes and scratches that uh, are still in the epoxy and cause the surface to be milky and the result of this should be an instant improvement in the optical quality. This is the final result after the varnish has dried for a couple of hours. The shape of the lens is not quite perfect. I think this is caused by the mold in which some air bubbles were still trapped and the epoxy later couldn't fill this out so the edge looks a bit crumbly but uh, I think the final result is actually pretty good. Here's some other lenses I made before. This one is basically producing the reverse effect to the one we just created. It, it scales an image down and this is achieved by the two surfaces pointing in the same direction but having different radii with the outer being slightly bigger than the inner one. This is the best result I got so far which is also a biconvex lens although with slightly different radii and um, here the optical quality is um, even better although still not perfect but it shows that this method really works and can indeed produce decent results. Here another close-up of all the lenses. The one we produced uh, as I've said um, shows some imperfections with the edge not being perfect and also some small air bubbles being caught in it. The best result actually looks quite decent and I'm very happy with, with this, although the optical quality is not perfect. But in general I'm quite happy with the results. So yeah, thanks for watching.